Welcome to my basement, everybody. We've got a great episode for you today. Our friend Mike Williams from US Gamer is joining me in a conversation about this insane year, 2020, uh, and all of the fantastic entertainment that video games in 2020 have provided us. We're going to talk about the best of 2020 so far. The caveat is so far. And we're also going to uh, reference some of your comments because I tweeted out what are some of your favorite games of the year so far. So we'll get into that a little bit. But uh, without further ado, here is our friend Mike Williams. Thank you for joining us today, Mike. And thank you again for your patience with our technical difficulties. Uh, doing these things online is not always as seamless as you want them to be. What technical difficulties? As far as everyone else is concerned, we just started and everything is is perfect, beautiful. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing as well as you can, you know, con considering the mire that is 2020. Uh, at the very least, I'm still gamefully employed and uh, there are still games coming out, so uh, I cannot complain. I think the video game industry is honestly, uh, they're, they're going crazy right now with development. I think everybody is sort of taking up this charge that, uh, uh, w you know, we're, we're going to be contained for a little while. You know, we're going to have to be safe for a little while. So we're going to be around our television sets and our computers uh, more than normal. And entertainment needs to fill that void. And I think the safest entertainment to be created is gaming content. People just yep. have to learn how to work remotely, right? So I think people are, I mean, I have a friend that runs a performance capture studio and he is insanely busy. He's got so much stuff going on. Really? I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, all that makes sense because they can probably do their performance capture with a very few people. Like I know the, the, like I follow movies and TV and they're sort of trying to figure out how to run a production in you know while following all of these guidelines and stuff like that and i know it's really hard and even netflix who seem to have a lot of uh shows in the can is probably starting to come up against that line now and at yeah. least games can still move forward even if games are a little bit delayed in terms of uh certain titles that have been pushed back uh notably halo infinite recently uh, yeah although maybe that's think not about that did you think that that was a good move? Yeah, I think that's a good move because uh, Halo 4 and Halo 5 were did not land the best. So this mm. is 343's next shot at really establishing its version of Halo and trying to put Halo back up on that pedestal that it was when it you know launched on the Xbox the very first time. So uh, I. I believe I prefer they they get it right rather than yeah. Well, that's just what throwing you and there. you and Sam and I when we talked last time. That's we talked about how important the reveal of Halo Infinite was going to be to Microsoft, and uh, I think they they got a sense of the gameplay and connecting the dots to you know the the classic Halo experience. I think they got that. I just think visually they didn't hit the targets that we were all expecting. Yeah. No. I. I, I don't think they did and uh, that's one of those things like people sort of uh fight over performance and you could tell that they really wanted to hit 60 frames per second or yeah. above and that was what they were aiming for like we want a smooth experience but sometimes for a prestige game you need to just go for all the bells and whistles yeah. uh, I, Especially when you're selling hardware, right? Like this is this is it now. Uh, um, you know they, they they have to convince people that the boxes are worth it. And uh, I, I love Microsoft's tactic on on saying that you can. Uh, you, there's there's a lot of software that's coming that you'll be able to play on existing platforms, or you can stream it if you want to. And I, I like this kind of broad open access your content wherever you want to kind of idea but they are also still trying to sell these brand new machines and and so we have to feel like we are taking a step forward even if it's an incremental step forward we have to feel like we're really moving into a new era and you know incremental to a consumer in 2020 is probably not going to do it you know like yeah and uh, my compatriots at uh digital foundry 
recently put up a video where they discussed it and uh, at least two of them the, the, the one takeaway they were like if you're going to delay it and you delay it long enough just cut the Xbox One version like it's going to it's going to hurt when if you don't but if you're if you, Halo Infinite is supposed to be your marquee game your, yeah. your big title you need to aim at the top end of what the Series X can do. Yeah, totally. I mean, it, the, I think the smart play there is to at least delay the Xbox One version of the game, right? Don't try to right. do it all at the same time um, even further. Like, get that Series X version of, of Halo Infinite to be an awesome experience before you do anything else, right? That's what they should yeah, do. Yeah, and, and I mean, supporting the Xbox One also means not just, like, me mentally, I think, X, support Xbox One, that's one X. But when Microsoft has to do it, they have to think about the original Xbox One. And yeah. that's way back. That's years ago that that console came out. And it's yes. it's hamstringing them, I think. A yep. Well, what has come out this year um, that has like truly blown you away? I put together a little list of my favorite 11 games of 2020 so far, but I'm very curious. Um, let's hear... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we'll get to your favorite stuff, but let's hear about maybe a couple of games or a few games that are down the list, but you still love them. Uh, probably. So I'll start uh, with a sort of indie-ish SnowRunner. Uh, from it's published by Focus Home. I don't actually remember who the developer is, but it's yeah. kind of a uh, almost delivery hauling game. Uh, they had a previous game called Mud Runner, and it's basically just taking big trucks and, for the most part, realistic uh, environments like mud and, and snow running, of course, snow and stuff like that, and sort of hauling other trucks, uh, deliveries through the wilderness. And maybe it's because Death Stranding, like, yeah. engendered that desire in me, just that... <laughs> There, there's something actually uh, relaxing about just loading up and now we're going to go through the environment, take your time do it right and it is relaxing and, and that's how I was with SnowRunner I was just like, I had not played MudRunner but yeah. uh, a friend of mine, Jeff Grubb over at GamesBeat swore by it so I was like, okay, I'll try it so when they sent over code, I tried it I was like, oh, this is this is a fun, relaxing experience. Like once you settle into that vibe, uh, it's it's really enjoyable. I'm not probably going to go to the next step, which would be like Euro Truck Simulator or, <laughs> or one of those games. But uh, like I think that splits the difference. Uh, it's still fun. It's not like a full simulation or anything, but it's just All right. really good. Yeah. I mean, the extreme environment stuff with vehicles, I've always loved that. And what a, what a uh, you know, I think we were all referencing Death Stranding as the pandemic hit and how, yep. you know, sort of prescient that game was. And of course, it's just hit the PC. And it is a totally different game to play post the, you know, the, the onset of this pandemic. Because all of those yep. feelings are there. And then you go back into it and it's like, Oh, I see how vital and important <laughs> this position can actually be in the world, and, and, and how you really feel connection. that weight. Yeah, yeah, and that was a great that was a great PC play. I also re uh, reviewed that, and uh, it uses. Uh, uh, so I have an RTX card, an NVIDIA RTX, and it uses NVIDIA's DLSS 2.0 technology. Yes. Yep. And that was just a fantastic port. It just, looks amazing. Yes. Oh, so I've good. Got, I've got a, an RTX card too. I've got an Alienware M17 that's not, it's a laptop, so it's not super like state of the art or anything, but it's pretty good. Uh, but I hit that DLSS and it's just like, holy crap, man. Stuff looks photo real with, uh, uh, you know, like level of detail and, and um, you know, sort of beautiful bouquet and, and blurring of stuff in the distance. It's it's really impressive. Yeah. With, without a huge performance hit. So, like, then I went to Horizon Zero Dawn on PC, which I was happy to visit, but no DLSS there. And then uh, the same, I loaded up uh, Marvel's Avengers, the beta, the PC. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping, I, I, I guess it's not because they haven't mentioned it, but yeah. I'm hoping because 
usually crystal dynamics at least with the tomb raider games is on the forefront of graphics technology of tech. Yeah, yeah absolutely T take us into dlss because i think this is an interesting topic and there's going to be competing um technology for what uh nvidia has crafted with uh, dlss but basically it, it's it's it shrinks the hit on the graphics processor and you yeah, get like so, full visuals. So as a, as a very, very reductive uh, version of it, basically it's rendering the game at a much lower resolution, like 1080, 720. And yes. then it is using AI. And the reason it's proprietary to NVIDIA currently is because the, the algorithm that they use runs on the uh, NVIDIA RTX tensor cores. Mm. and it extrapolates what a higher resolution image would look like. So it's essentially rendering the game at 1080p, and then it's faking its way up, like up to 4K or whatever else you would like. And That is uh, such the future of games, isn't it? Like it's either going to be, it's going to be a fight of like maximizing lower cost processors or streaming. And, and, and in the middle of all that is hardware that's going to push your pocketbook and the cost of manufacturer and going to constantly be trying to impress you with the the whiz bang that it can do while these two other competing uh you know technologies are going to try to vie for that mind share and find and find a, a space in there you know to, uh, yeah. to come in at a lower dollar but still deliver something that is uh quite staggering and and god death stranding's a pretty cool thing to point to and say well look this this actually can work quite well yeah it's uh it's showing at least for nvidia that like aiming at features instead of just power so they this yeah. is uh the second one the first being ray tracing which blew up yeah. and that's now uh is really a good differentiator i mean like uh, AMD is going to be adding ray tracing hardware support to its con and of course the consoles will support it. But mm -hmm. like Nvidia sort of has that mind share already, at least on PC. Um, awesome. So features are nice, especially like I mean it's we're hitting 4K, but yeah, not everyone is probably there, and it's not like we can really like 8K TVs exist. But that's not yeah. going to be a like a game thing. Well, dude. We live in a world where Switch competes and compares with a you know a 2080 RTX card. Like it 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 isn't it isn't so much of a shock to the system to go from a super high end PC and have a great time with gaming there, and then turn on your Switch and play a 720 you know <laughs> round of Animal Crossing, and it's like well that you know, I mean you can certainly see the resolution hit, but you like we we ha we have certainly hit a different kind of. Uh, uh, you know, visual fidelity plateau ar across gaming right. than going from PS1 to PS2, you know, or N64 to GameCube or something. That, those were dramatic leaps. And even in the PC world, we would see from one car generation to another car generation, huge, huge leaps. But now things, things look great all the way from the Switch. Like I've been playing Crisis on the Switch, which is an okay port. Right. But it, it's a, it's a pretty wide open, just like the you know the the 2007 game. Where it's a wide open, sandboxy, 3D shooter, and it's impressive that you have that much freedom on the Switch, even though this is a super old game. It looks okay, you know. Yeah. But uh, and you're playing it, it certainly, a portable. Yeah, I'm playing it portably exactly. But it, it, it's it seems. It, it seems harder for the companies to wow us with. A visual statement um, although there are definitely some challengers to that with one of them was Ghost one, of Tsushima I was about yeah. to say one is gonna be uh, probably I I'm, I'm struggling I feel like is is that my favorite game of the year like I don't know uh, it, <laughs> it, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to favorites but it, yeah it's, it's a contender it's sure a stunning game and I think we talked about this the last time we had you on is the uh, uh, it's like the it's like the trailer for what the PlayStation 5 is going to be. It's like the, the this is the expectation now is games of this visual fidelity and this quality for this next gen. And it's almost the uh, the perfect on ramp for people that are had any doubt about the future of PlayStation. It's like, oh, yeah, well, 
look what we achieved on the <laughs> PS4. You, <laughs> you know, now, life, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now get ready, you know. Um, okay, well, let's let's go up your list a little bit and and give us one or two other games that uh, uh, you've really loved, but they're not at the very top of your of your uh, faves. I will say Gears Tactics. Uh, oh yes, splash damage, walked in. I'm a very big tactics strategy fan. I like that game a hell of a lot too. It was very cool. Yeah, and splash damage for for a developer that has classically been first person shooters to really dive in with a tactic strategy game and put a good gear spin on it. Like I, I'm a big fan of XCOM and XCOM 2. Yeah. Uh, but Gears Tactics does have like the it, it fits Gears mm -hmm. with the cover and they made the game itself a little bit more aggressive in terms of play where you can sort of chain together like when you do an execution, it gives an accent point to the rest of your party members and you can start to speed up the momentum of murder uh, in a very Gears way as opposed to sort of XCOM's uh, slightly slower, more defensive, methodical play. Although, yeah, striking. Yeah, and it, it's a very accessible turn-based strategy experience as well, you know, even more so than uh, an XCOM game. Not as not as accessible as uh, Mario Rabbids or or even uh, uh, you know incredible game uh, or or Fire Emblem, uh, but it's it's totally worthy. I think they needed to come out with a, a an Xbox version of that, you know, right. at launch to to give it a little bit more of atten attention out there. And so many of the Gears fans are already on Xbox. It is a great PC game though, and I I, I agree. It's it's one of the highlights of the year. I'm gonna throw one in. Um, and this is kind of a cheat, but I'm going to talk about the uh, the Turbo Graphics 16 Mini, oh. uh, which yeah, which I featured quite a bit on the channel, and I I was so excited to get that machine because I never had it originally, and it was always this great big mystery. And I'm I don't know if you had the machine, but so, I have so, lots. Of... Go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, I had. Uh, it was weird when we were deciding. I didn't get to review it, and I was sort of sad. Cat. Uh... Bailey, my uh, editor-in-chief, got to review it. And she was like you. She hadn't played it. I had a TurboGrafx-16 yeah. uh, with the, the Hue cards and everything. So for me, like that was returning to the fold because the Turbo Graphics, like not only did I have the uh, 16, I also had the Turbo Express, uh, which awesome. was a little handheld. I um, have that, but I've only got Bonks. And, oh, Bonks you know, Adventure? Like yeah, and and my sound is is dead because I, I know that that's a pretty common thing with them. But so I've never gone back to fix it. But I never had any other games, and I never really had the uh, the Turbo Graphics experience, and, and so it blew my mind, man. Like I was really impressed by the the visual pop of the games, the colors, the speed of the games. A lot of shooters, uh, shoot 'em ups. Uh, but I, I really, really dug it. And I think um, Konami and M2 and, and whoever, I think they worked with Hori or something like that to put the yep. actual physical stuff together. It's really, really solid. And uh, it fits perfectly alongside the Genesis Mini and the Super Nintendo Mini and the NES Mini. I, I just think it's a wonderful, yep. it's a wonderful part of my collection. Did, did you end up getting one of these? Uh, yes, I, I ended up picking one up. I have not actually opened it yet because uh, I've just uh, been so busy like jumping from game to game to game. Uh, but the TurboGrafx-16 was one of those systems that like, it had a lot of pretty good games, not as much as uh, its no. competitors at the time, but it was definitely one of those systems um, that reminded me of, say, the Neo Geo Pocket, which right. uh, you have back there which is another like good system with pretty good games but was just vastly overshadowed yeah 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 in that case it needed a, a full backlight screen um i'm gonna throw one uh, one more microsoft game in here um and we don't talk about microsoft exclusives nearly as much as we all would like to uh it takes them a little while to kind of get their speed i hope and this is the big thing right like you and sam and i all talked about they they need to they need to deliver on all their acquisitions but they certainly did with uh ori and the will of the wisps which was uh very familiar to fans of the first story and very right. similar but but it's so beautiful and so 
uh, so polished and tuned and atmospheric and and uh, you know there's a melancholy that drips all the way through it but it's just a it's a it's gorgeous art you know in all senses of the word for games it's just a beautiful creation did you beat it because I, I know it's it's very hard I have not I, played it. I, I have not got all the way to the very end. No, oh, okay. I'm very, very far into it, but I had to move on to another game as well. But uh, And that's uh, one of those games that will benefit from Microsoft's newest play because they showed, I think they showed like a, like a yeah, 120, 120 frames yes. per second version of it. So that's one of those that should carry over and be improved on Series yeah. X. And I did the same thing with the first game. Like I, uh, I played tons of it and was like, okay, I know how I feel about this game. I can talk about it. And then I went back to it later and finished it, and it was incredibly satisfying. Also frustrating. That's part of the Ori. <laughs> that's part of the franchise. Just like Cuphead, you know, like it's it, they they put you through your, your paces. But uh, yeah, I love the first game, and the second game is a better game, although it's certainly not the shock and the surprise of the first game, but. Um, that is a definitely a win in the in the first party camp at, at Microsoft, and it's weird that they're you know vaguely non-committal about the future with Moon, the the developers, and whether they're right. going to acquire them or bring. Because I feel like that would be a very very good move for them. Ori should be Microsoft should be thinking about brands within their brand that are tied to them. You know, right. like they're the first thing that we think about when, because I, I see if they don't pick up Moon, if they don't make that a first party thing forever, they're going to get swallowed up like one of the other guy it could be Sony, you know? Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they probably broached the subject and Moon hasn't like fully committed. Because sometimes when you're in that indie space, yeah, you're like, I don't, I don't know if I want to like... When you're a B tier uh, studio or, or a double A, where you have 50, 100, so some odd employees, then like being Microsoft coming in and saying we want to acquire you seems it's an easy win. Like if you're a Ninja Theory, yeah. you're like I got 50 mouths to feed, I'll take your money. Yeah. But when you're Moon, <laughs> when you're like oh I got like 15, 20 people, and we're yeah. doing pretty good now and there's distributed development too they're all over right. the place they're not they're not all in a centralized so they're not having to pay rent probably on a huge space but holy crap is that a talented group man oh amazing game yeah no and i, I wouldn't be surprised if they'll continue working with microsoft i that that feels like one of those like i i feel like phil spencer has gone to them and said come on man. yeah join us well, that, I mean, that's precisely what Microsoft needs, right? Like, Sony did a great job at, uh, um, in this generation, kind of uh, transitioning to a new era for the brand and uh, bringing back franchises like God of War, acquiring Spider-Man as its exclusive thing, picking up Insomniac, uh, um, launching new titles right. with Horizon and Death Stranding. Um, making killer sequels like Last of Us 2 and launching a brand new theoretical franchise with, Go oh, I'm sure it is now, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, but tying all of those published works to PlayStation, to that brand. Even if right. now we're, we see Death Stranding on PC or Horizon on PC, everybody knows that they're, PlayStation, they're a PlayStation baby, you know? And right. Microsoft definitely that's what their whole thing needs to be now. It's like, we need to identify specific games, even if their motto is play anywhere or whatever, you know, take your take our games anywhere. We need to know exactly what Xbox Game Studios represents and what those titles are, you know? That's their, that's their, uh, that's gotta be their drive from here on out. Yeah, no, they they definitely do, and I, they at least need it on the console side. Like, yeah, this is a game you definitely can only get on Xbox. Yeah, um, and they're getting there. Like we said last time, they're they're getting there, and some of the games uh, that will come eventually, like Obsidian with Avowed, like that's that's Obsidian finally being able to step up to the Bethesda level. Yes. Hopefully and, and and deliver their Skyrim or whatever they would do on their side. I'm uh, so with happy those for resources. Obsidian. 
Yeah, and Grounded did quite well when it launched as well. It's doing, uh, it's it's been doing some pretty phenomenal numbers already. But yep. let's talk a little more about the uh, the past and what 2020 has delivered. Give us another one of your uh, high high on the list, but maybe not the top of the list games. Uh, this one's kind of a cheat because it yep. technically came out in 2012. Fantasy Ooh. Star Online 2. Oh my God! Uh, okay, yeah, is is a lot of, of fun. It's mindless. It's like mindless, <laughs> stupid fun, but it is a lot of fun, and I actually sort of vibe with it since it's free to play. You can just pick it up and go. Um, it's on Steam. What do you now. play on? Do you play on PC? Or oh, it's on PC only right now, right? It's not on the consoles yet, or is it? Uh, it was on Xbox One first, and oh, okay. Windows Ten, and then okay. they just launched on Steam. Okay. Uh, the PC versions, there is a, a separate fan-created launcher to get it to launch. Oh, so you wow. have to do a little fiddly with it. Okay. But once you get it loaded up, it's fun. Do you play on PC or do you play it in the console? Uh, I, it's, I've i been playing on Xbox One. Okay. And then uh, I downloaded the Steam version and have not played it yet. Okay. I played the Dreamcast game, and I remember really digging it and having uh, lots of uh, arguments with Tommy Tellerico back in the day because that was not <laughs> one of his faves. Uh, but I always thought it was great, but I never checked out uh, Fantasy Star Online 2. Um, I, it sounds like I have to, though. Sounds like it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's a lot of it's it's a, a good bit of fun in that sort of oldie, arcadish way. And it's interesting because uh, Marvel's Avengers, which I was playing for beta last week, yeah. really sort of has that same oh, wow. feeling <laughs> where you know you have sort of a hub that you start at and then you get up a team of random people and you go out to a mission and the missions are either like five to ten minutes they're real quick or they're like longer harder uh missions that you can tackle uh, for more high level play and so like everyone was talking about destiny and i was like mm, Destiny is not the right comparison for Marvel's Avengers because right. it doesn't have like Destiny has worlds like you drop into a world, you do world events and 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 you can organically make groups. Destiny is is um, uh, purposefully amorphous and and uh, non directional. It's perfect, you know, like you don't quite know what the hell you're going to do when you start up. At the, and and that is right. always my hesitation with Destiny. It's like I I know if I start this, I'm going to play for hours and not know <laughs> why. Not, and not, and not, you know, apart from leveling up, I'm going to like I I don't know what the hell I'm going to achieve with this, you know, and I they made it look like that. But it feels like, you know, like I've done this forwards. I've done this backwards. I fought this boss. I fought this boss backwards. I've Like it just feels uh, like you get thrown into a washing machine in a way with Destiny. It's still cool. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna really groove on Avengers. I didn't check out the beta. I, I usually, that's the one I wanted to, but I usually don't have the time to beta it up. I usually just wait till the game is done and then I'll dive into it and play it. But uh, that's one I'm dying for. It's, it, you know, it's that and Tony Hawk and Squadrons. Yeah. Those are the games that I'm so, and, and uh, Cyberpunk. Avengers is, is it's, a, it's a fuzzy game. I'll, I'll say yeah. that. Like it definitely, has its technical issues and problems uh like reviewing it and looking at it like objectively i'm like oh this is kind of like a six out of ten experience overall oh, but for some reason i just kept loading up the beta and just it's those heroes man it's those yeah. heroes we want to be those heroes this is this is a dream I mean, God, I've created this whole segment of, of side-scrolling superheroes and playing all these old games that are, uh, you know, uh, m most of them are not great, but some <laughs> of them really are. But it's because that fantasy of jumping in into the boots of these these heroes is just that at, at step one is just so fun, you know? Yeah. And then if, if they can deliver on it, I, I have a sense that I'm going to be I'm going to be addicted. Did you did you like the Iron Man VR game? Did you play Iron Man VR? Uh, I did not. Someone else reviewed that for us. Okay, uh, okay. Also, because I, it, uh, it's annoying to pull out the the yes. PSVR uh, yes. if you haven't had it hooked up, and I have not. Uh, I'm more yeah. of an Oculus um, the the quest. quest, especially yeah. once they added the Oculus Link. It was we're we're good. So now I I play 
quest by itself and then i'll play pc games from steam using the oculus link so so you played alex then you played half-life alex i did indeed is that on your list uh yes it is it's not at the top of my list but but it's it, it is a great experience it feels almost to me uh like another uh game this year earlier dreams yeah less of a thing that i i personally am like oh i love diving in and making things but more of a i look at it and i'm like oh someone's going to take what what valve has started here and source and vr and make new things with it and that's always right. very cool and that's one of the great things about valve too is they they encourage that they hope right. for that and that wish is fulfilled and gamers are the better for it uh i thought alex was uh sensationally uh successful at wrapping you in the world and yep. and mirroring the experience of what we know tactically and and tactilely is that if that's a word uh from playing half-life and uh um, it, but it, it, through this fully realized 3D uh, VR, you know, s- s- stimulation that they made, right. just incre- and simulation that they made, incredible. But also, and I said this in my review, the gaming of it wasn't as good as the best first-person shooters and right. the survival horror games that you can, you know, filter through your files and reference the full time that you're playing it. And, uh, um, and I also find VR can be, although that one much less so than Iron Man VR, but it can be a bit exhausting um, through its ask of you physically to kind of stand and wait and load and and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And so sometimes the games like Pistol Whip, which I loved last year, where they are just like quick little bits, can almost be a little bit more successful in VR than the full you know meal type of experience like half-life alex is i'm i'm hoping uh i don't think they had it for squadrons test when they they allowed us to test it vr support is in and i want to try that because that feels like the right spot like you're in you're sitting you got the controller and all vr is really adding is being able to immerse you in the experience look around yeah, right. I loved Eve, on, uh, Eve Valkyrie when I played that on. Uh, uh, I played that first on PlayStation VR, mm-hmm. and, and you know, with VR too, I was like that. I, I didn't want to demo these things in public because you know I kept sending uh, you know Marissa and different people that I worked with mm-hmm. to do these these demos, and every time they would come off, they t- pull the headset off, they go, "Whoa, that was incredible!" And and every, <laughs> you know, I kept getting offered, "Will you put the VR headset on at E3 and GDC?" And it's like. Well, I know that it's just going to be incredible. I want to just be at home, not have any other BS around me, and see how I, I like it as a game, you know? And when I played Eve Valkyrie for the first time, I was like, holy crap, now I get this. This is amazing. <laughs> you know, where you actually feel like you're physically ma- maneuvering through space in 3D. It was so staggering. And yes, I've been I've been banging the drum for Star Wars since then, and we're finally getting it. I think it's going to be insane in VR. Yeah, no, that's that's the one I'm I'm looking forward to because it's it's uh, just a little bit of, of extra to the experience, uh, and then I'm intrigued yeah, by I, Hitman Three VR in VR. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll see how that goes. I'm a little I, again. I'd have to pull out the the PSVR. Hopefully, <laughs> it, it will come to the PC version. If it is, I'll try it there. Uh, but that's looking interesting, especially in that's terms of I, interaction. That's what I said about Iron Man VR, which is a, a, a terrific PlayStation VR game. It's really cool. You really feel like Iron Man. It's very well made. Uh, you know, like they they really nailed the core experience. Just pick, taking off, you know, and flying into the air for that first time. I I, I streamed it, and I was freaking out when I did it. Ah! Uh, <laughs> but but you're also tethered, and you, you've got those old move controllers which need that the camera needs to see and so if you put it behind your body the, there's you know tracking issues i said i desperately want that on on quest you know right. even if it's lower spec and it doesn't look quite as tasty and nice as it does on a ps4 pro 
it, it, the freedom is what you want when you're playing Iron Man. So I'm hoping that Marvel and PlayStation, you know, they're publishing on PC. I'm hoping that they're thinking about stuff like that. And honestly, um, and I asked this question on Twitter the other day too, like I, I, I say this about Spider-Man all the time. It's one of the most accessible video games period ever made in terms of I, it, previous Spider-Man games have been as well, but this one is especially important because of its fidelity and its, you know, beautiful 4K-ness and right. uh, the the sort of currency of Spider-Man across the MCU. Uh, it's such an important game, like clearly for Sony, but for the medium that I wish it was on more machines. So I really hope that Sony publishes Insomniac Spider-Man with Marvel games on PC um, that would be crazy cool, you know. Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, Miles Morales as well. I would, I, as much as like, you know, give it time. Sure, if it's a couple of years or whatever. But I just want yeah. more people to play that game. You know, look at the furor that Sony locking up Spider-Man in the Avengers. Ooh, has caused. Ooh you know? such. Yeah, <laughs> and that was disappointing to me too because I, I actually tend to not have problems with because i have all of the the platforms so it's just like whatever like a, yes. you know um and sometimes when we get review codes they'll force us to like uh, xbox one is all you get i'm like okay whatever yeah. but this one i was like adventures i was like ah, i'm gonna play it on pc like this yeah. this feels like a game and then spider-man and i'm just like ah yeah damn it now i like i have to play the playstation on, Yes. On PlayStation because I love Spider-Man so much. And they'll probably do the whole gamut of Spider-Man on PlayStation. You know, they'll yeah. probably do Miles and Gwen and yeah, it's not fair. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then the other worst part about it, so you're playing on PlayStation, but the way Marvel's Avengers works is only one person on a team can be a character. Yeah. Uh, they said that when I when I interviewed uh, Scott Amos, the studio head said that they might have something post-launch for that, mm. but they want to launch with you got one Black Widow on a team, one Spider-Man, one Captain America, and I was yeah. like, like, you, like you can do that. I understand the conceptually, but for when you're playing it, you'll really get used to a certain character that will become your main the class you play so to speak yes. and being like saying hey i want to get together with three of my friends and two of us happen to be black widow mains and so one of us has to switch off that just feels and spider-man especially i think is going to put a big oh God, yeah. dot over that eye just well like, this i mean is gonna they're gonna they're gonna spider verse it right up just, just, I mean, that'll probably be where they challenge it, and that'll be another determiner for the play. PlayStation is so well positioned right now; it's ridiculous, man. They really are. Like, uh, I think um, Xbox is going in a different direction. I think they're going to be fine selling yeah. across the threshold and streaming and all that stuff. But PlayStation as a as a, as a, a whole. piece of hardware, yeah. Yeah, like I so I wrote earlier this week uh, after the Halo that I, I don't think either console is particularly ready for launch this holiday season. No. Um, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, general console war." Like, "Oh, that's just because Xbox lost Halo." And I was like, "No, I, I just don't think either is ready." Yeah. But overall, the Sony Prestige model I think is a little bit better paced to push a new box. Yeah. I think Microsoft might actually find a lot of space when they release the Series S, assuming it's cheap enough, yeah. that their Play Anywhere model might actually work out to the point that the Series S is really, in the wider mainstream public's yeah. co mind, the main console. Well, you know, because I'm sure you've got one, how powerful the Xbox One X is. Right. And, and I'm sure there's lots of games where you can go from the PS4 Pro to the X and go, well, it's better on the Xbox One X. Right. And so if, if they release a, uh, a spec of a console that's like two or three times better than the Xbox One X and it's not that expensive and you'll have access to 
killer third party games and, and whatever so, uh, it, uh, Microsoft has got ready for first party, mm -hmm. they've got something compelling there. But yeah, I think just as a head to head, the Series X and the PlayStation PS5, 5. The, PS5 the is, they're going to kill them. Like they're the, just. The prestige model, it's, it's, the, it's the prestige games from Sony and yep. Japan. Japan is such, especially this generation with the yeah. PS4, Japan is yes. such a force multiplier. Totally. Uh, so. Yeah, they killed it. So let's talk about a couple other big ones. I think, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake was pretty damn impressive, wasn't it? And there's right there, Japan, Square yeah. Enix. Here it is. It's PS4, and it's yeah. it was it's a fantastic game. It, it, it you know like did a great job honoring the history, but it also was a completely fresh new play experience that was very current and vital. And uh, you certainly want more, and they're going to give us more. And right, I think and they... and it'll come to Xbox probably at some point. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like 15 did, but that year that you have is just mind share right there. It's very important. Yeah, um, and that's always going to be the case for uh, for this the, that Microsoft Sony fight that Japan. I like maybe we'll see more stuff uh, like Yakuza, like a dragon which I'm also looking yeah. forward to, which is actually coming in the West to Xbox because they're like, Xbox is a big enough platform over there that we should think about that. But for the most part, like that mid-range, uh, like B to AAA in Japan, that's all on PlayStation or Switch. Yeah. Dude, and Xbox should have bought Sega. You know, when remember when the Sega sort of intimation was happening and they were talking about some big announcement and I thought we were going to get like Dreamcast, uh, you know, compatibility, like backwards compatibility on Series X going back to other people's consoles or something like that. But the more I think about it, they've always struggled in Japan. Sega is such a, you know, powerhouse with brands and games and, and could only benefit from cash injection and from... Uh, somebody recognizing the value of their catalog and re, uh, you know, energizing, you know, remakes and, but also just the history of all that stuff and recollecting it. And I mean, that's just a, like, if, if they wanted to get into Japan in a massive way, the, the legacy and the history and the uh, value of the, some of those game names and brands, that would be a, an amazing I think it would be an amazing thing for both companies, you know, like, and, but and Sony is, and Sony is apparently, uh, my man Imran Khan says that Sony uh, is, is opening the wallet to lock in some exclusives and I've heard scuttle of such. So it's like, it's going to, it's the, the, if you try to sell boxes, new games new beautiful games are the way to do it yeah and, and sony you cannot and be and you can't be uh you know way in last place in japan japan has been crushing it with lots and lots of like excellent nintendo games excellent sony first yep. party games excellent third party stuff from capcom's back on fire square enix has been doing some really great stuff uh you know yeah um yeah, it's tough not to veer right back to Xbox. It's like, come on, guys, come on. <laughs> uh, speaking of Nintendo, the the biggest game of the year is theirs. Uh, so yeah, totally, Animal Crossing: New Horizons, which is probably mid range. Like I fell off it real quick. Did you? I did. I did. Hey, hey, were you already on board with Animal Crossing? Like, are you a, a super fan of the franchise, or w w how no? Do you, how I, do you stand on it? Okay. Yeah, I, I I played the original and I knew about it vaguely enough, and then I was just like, like everyone else, it's just like, oh, okay, I, I'll pick it up because everyone's playing it, and it's on Switch, and we're under quarantine, so I don't have anything else to do. So I did, and I played it. A, a lot for a while and then I just sort of fell off I'm just like I, I don't I don't have time like I, I cover uh, MMOs like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy 14 and that's like the extra bits of time that I have yes 
So, uh, but it's, I, I think the last they said it sold 22 million. 22 million worldwide. Copies. And yeah. that's that's already like I think probably the second biggest Switch game from Nintendo. Yeah. Yes. Uh, only beaten by Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So that's just absurd. Like Smash was already absurd. Animal Crossing. Uh, Nintendo just... has just just crushed it with this machine and the <laughs> and the releases for this machine. Uh, but I, I I have to admit I still play it from time to time. But I I I like you. And it's interesting because when I was kind of figuring out who am I going to talk to about about all of these games across all of these different platforms, you know, mm -hmm. media in games is so different now. There are there isn't a massive list of people that cover games that go in and check out everything, you know. Right. So you were right at the top <laughs> of the the list of people that I wanted to talk to about this. But a lot of people, uh, you know, because you you check out stuff and I check out stuff, there's certainly a time, you're thinking of the time that you're giving to a game like Animal Crossing. As much as it's right. fun, it's like, well, I have six other games that I sh should be playing so I can talk about them or write about them. And uh, I, I that's how I've been playing Animal Crossing recently. But it was also an incredible way to just check in every day. And my kid still plays it and we play it together. Um, and uh, I... I got them before i you know i played them before but animal crossing has always been a little bit confusing to me it's like okay. uh, kind of like with the sims you know it's like well there's a lot of you do a lot of chores and because <laughs> you're doing chores in this video game you're really you're neglecting real life chores <laughs> and that seems a little like why don't i go and you know pick the weeds out of my own garden why am i <laughs> yeah why am I, <laughs> but yeah, this see, time I, I loved it yeah, I vibe with it just because I I, I had to, done Stardew Valley previously, and I I also like um, PC survival games. So like Ark Survival Evolved, Conan Exiles, like that style of here's you into a harsh world, go out, punch a thing until you get resources, craft it into better stuff, and then you do that treadmill. So like it's it's very much in that. But then as I was playing it, I was just kind of like. But I could be playing Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was just like, ah. Uh. And and then of course there's always games coming out, so you never get to stop. Uh, well, one thing that I think Nintendo's done now, though, because of the sales, is uh, you know this this takes the cap off of what what they can do with Animal Crossing, like. Right. Uh, it, like going for well first of all this game is going to be supported for a long time and there's going to be some updates that will shock us i'm sure of it but whatever happens on the next gen switch with animal crossing is going to be staggering it's going to like the investment is going back into um yeah i mean we might be going to to space you know like it's just going to be massive wherever they yeah I'm, I'm hoping they keep going because nintendo as sort of this generation and the last has sort of been like a two-year thing where they're like let's ride this game out uh they i i was particularly salty about mario maker 2 which they've just sort of like we're done uh, yes yeah we're, we're done our uh so mario kart 8 deluxe is one of the the best-selling games on the switch right that's a that's an easy game like you already with the dlc from eight have opened it up to allow Link and Isabel. Like yep. you could have just kept adding characters, and people would buy characters and tracks 100%. from Mario Kart 8 just forever. And Nintendo could yeah. do that. So, um, and they haven't. They classically haven't. Which it, that's part of the way Nintendo works. Like it's you very just, much. You you just you just um, brought up two references that I think create the perfect game for Nintendo to make. On the next gen, they should make Mario Kart Maker, yeah. and they should let us just create with all of their characters and go nuts. That would be incredible. Which, which I'm putting also on my list the, of the mid-range games. Track Mania, Nintendo, yes. make us a Mario Kart Track Mania. Track Mania is a fantastic game, and the thing that's really preventing Track Mania from being bigger is track mania like the the infrastructure around it yeah. like it's just a little bit too obtuse for the average person a little bit too messy like there needs to be a game 
that Ubisoft Nanao makes that is Trackmania, that is more mainstream, that's easy to connect to and find new levels. Uh, but they haven't quite gotten there just because there, there's a lot of PC <laughs> jank and messaging and, and accounts and it's just... Uh, and Nintendo could do it. Nintendo could do it. Nint Nintendo could lick that for sure. I think uh, Media Molecule has come very close with Dreams, but it's still... Um, it, it, it's staggering to see the creativity and the talent that have, you know, uh, delivered software inside of the software that's just like, holy crap, how did you learn how to do that? But it's still... It asks a lot of you and your patients to kind of go in granularly and, you know, look at all the the dials and the widgets and the customizable pieces that you can put into the game. Right. It's 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 a lot and it's incredible. It's totally worth the money because, you know, in the reams and reams of stuff that you're going to find in there, there's beautiful work. But it's it's still I mean, it really underlines how freaking difficult it is to make video games, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, Dreams is another one of those. I'm like, Dreams I, I look at from afar. Like, I started yeah. it up, played it for a while, and I was like, uh, it's the same feeling I have with Minecraft when I look at, like, oh, uh, here's a recreation of the Starship Enterprise in <laughs> Minecraft. And I'm just like, I put down 20 blocks, I make a hut, and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I will. I will download your your level and and explore it when you make it. But I don't have that kind of wherewithal. Yeah. And Dreams is the same way. Like I started up, I was like, oh wow, you can do a lot with this. I'm not going to, but I will partake <laughs> in other people's. Uh, and there, I think there... once that comes to PC, once that comes to PC, that will be. Oh yeah. Yes. That, yeah, I mean, there almost is this media opportunity to uh, j just create content about the game making s software and the, the endlessly custom. You could just build like a, a channel that's just devoted, and I'm sure people have, that is just devoted to, uh, you know, Dreams and Minecraft and Roblox and all of these different things that allow you to just constantly customize all of that stuff. And that's all you do is just dig in do tutorials on how to build and play all that stuff but yeah we're a little bit more um general interest and in cover you, you know sort of vast stretches of all of this stuff yeah totally but dreams is still even though i don't have like you the time to go and make stuff or see everything it still blew me away um i'm gonna throw in uh doom eternal on my list which i think is kind of a no-brainer did you enjoy the oh, yeah. madness of that game yeah yeah no i i i enjoy doom eternal a lot especially once i i you know you finished it and then it was just like a lot of people were a little uh off about that because it had so much lore and i was like i, I kind of enjoy this stuff yeah me too uh, especially because like the characters are like sort of talking at the doom slayer and he's just like mm. I mean, I don't really care. It's like let's... well, it's such a it's such a uh, an important brand in the business, and it's like the, the, you know this younger team uh, got control of the ideas and the concepts at it, and we're able to kind of take Doom and some like brave, cool, successful new directions. And it's like I don't. Did you go back and play because they released all the classic Doom games? Did you play Doom Three again by any chance? Uh, I did not. I thought about it because uh, I loaded up Doom sixty four and then I yeah. played it for like two levels and I was like, oh, I'm good. I, I don't need. Yeah. I, don't need I was like that fun. with Doom three and and Doom three. You know that was a huge technological achievement when they released it. But man, it's a piece of crap today. It's just <laughs> it does not hold up. It's not fun. It's nowhere near as good as Doom twenty sixteen or Doom Eternal, <laughs> and it doesn't even contain the sense of, like, uh, you know, overwhelming dread that you got from the first Doom and Doom 2, you know? But the do right. the new Dooms, they really do at a fidelity that's just, it's like you, you, it's like you're in the Memorex ad, and you've got all this stuff flying at you, and your hair's flying back, and you're just hanging on for dear life. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very tense experience and very, like, uh, almost like an action game like a bayonet or like it's more about prizing your actual execution and being able to read the battlefield in front of you like yeah. okay there's one of the whiplashes 
time to take out the rocket launcher and blow that up. Okay, there's a there's a Keiko demon over there. Like you, you always gotta keep in mind what's on the battlefield and what you actually have. It's like I'm low on ammo. It's time to chainsaw something. Yeah. There is strategy. It isn't just madness. There is definitely uh, a little. Uh, it's like you have to see in uh, see the world around you, like the Flash or something. And every every you know, like you have to take a snapshot of it. Everything's working in slow mo for a second, and then go and just try to make yeah. it through. <laughs> no, and that's why that's why I really enjoyed uh, that and and the lore together. I thought it was just a fun overall experience. Uh, some people probably preferred the first doom 2016 yeah uh because it's a slightly different experience but i i enjoyed what doom eternal was so i'm glad to see that they're carrying it forward with the new dlc the story dlc the I, the first gods i think it was called fired so, up to go back there so what are what are your faves uh i'm gonna say ghost of tsushima i'm yeah uh, it's it it stuck with me i like it's, it's one of those experiences man. and I'm, I'm completely done it like I, I I ran rough shot over the entire game got everything uh, and it was a lot like Sp Spider-Man was the same way where it was like yeah. 25 hours I finished the whole thing like I had done every uh, major crime you know I had done uh, the whole map I finished the story and it was done and it was just satisfying to have that feeling uh, and it's such a beautiful game. Uh, just it's so, so incredible. I want to ask you what you did at the end, uh, but I don't want to spoil it. Uh, well, you have I, the choice. I can, I, I can tell you I got the white costume. Okay. If you don't, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a staggering piece of work, and there is so much... Um, you know, when, when Sony announced that a Spider-Man game was coming, I think they announced it before it was Insomniac, or they, they announced some kind of a Marvel thing. I thought for sure that it was going to be Sucker Punch working on it. And it's so fascinating that uh, here they have these two just tremendously uh, powerful developers working independently, crafting games that are very different from each other, but have that same sense of compulsion and same sense of right. uh hooks in you you know like it's and you know it just it really speaks to the uh curation qualities and the trust that the uh playstation first party um uh, liaison folks have with their right. teams you know and and uh, you know last of us 2 i think is uh is my favorite game of 2020 so far uh across all of the artistic kind of quadrants. I just think it's just a, a staggering piece of work. It's mm. beautiful technically. And I I thought that the storytelling uh, for me was poignant and heavy and uh, hard to the stomach and aggravating and, and terrifying. Um, but it was also so elegant and so, you know, crafted so well. Like it just, it felt like a next gen game when I was playing it. I, I adored that game, but I know not everybody did. Did you? How do you? How did you feel about it? Uh, I actually didn't get to play it yet. Uh, oh my god! No way. Because uh, as you you were talking about it being heavy, that is what I heard from our side as well. Um, yeah. So I know most of the story beats, and I was just like, I don't know if I want to do this now. Yeah. Uh, and then Ghost it of Tsushima hit. It's a, uh, it was weird timing. Yeah, I mean, it really, like, I, I felt for Naughty Dog because this is not a game that you just, you know, like, I'm st I am posted a, a spoiler video and I still am, because people are taking their time and they're finishing it and they're finding my video and they're, it, it, there's a therapeutic quality in all of it because <laughs> you, you, you really survive some shit in that game. Like, it is, it, right. it is like that. But, it is also very fun. It's also very fun to play. Yeah. You just have to survive that first go with it. <laughs> and then it's fun. But yeah, it's uh I can't wait to talk with you. I I'm I'm honestly I'm I'm envious of people that haven't played it because it's so uh 
I mean, it's it's aggra aggravating a lot of people. A lot of people are very offended by some of the artistic choices and creative choices in it. And I understand some of those reasons, but it's just so uh, gutsy and it's it, it's so like it's like a taste of the future, you know, but it's yeah. here. This, this is this is what I've heard, like uh, when because uh, Cat played both. Um, yeah. And she was like, they should have reversed yes. the release order. Yeah. And had Ghost of Tsushima in the PS4, and then uh, Last of Us Part Two sort of glimpse Rich. ahead yeah. to the PS5, uh, which I concur. With. You know, and, and they could have made the Last of Us Part Two a split release, like Legend of Zelda, you know, right. like Breath of the Wild, and that would have been a very um, I think people would have totally understood that. And, you know, there would have been obviously the dials turned up for the PS5 version of the game. However, though, like it's such a massive success and it really is another game that just underlines, you know, what Sony's got cooking for the future. And, and uh, like, and they didn't have slouches, man. Like even Days Gone was a good game and God of War yeah. was great, you know, like they, they really delivered in this generation. But Last of Us Part Two is, Oh my God! I can't wait to talk with you when you play it. Yeah. Uh, you, speaking of creative choices and continuing with Sony, uh, we already talked about FF7 remake. Those were some interesting choices at the end of that game. Again, yeah. not trying to spoilers. I was just like, I was just like, man, is, is this happening? Like, is, are we? We have we have completely gone off the reservation. It is time to go completely ham and uh, like I I like. I was just in my head. I was like, Tetsu, you know, Mura. you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. Uh, Cause that's uh, like, Kat was so torn about that game. Yeah. She's like, I love this game up until they got to the end. And she was just like, I hate everything about the end of this game. And I was like, I love it. It's so stupid and amazing <laughs> and out there. Uh, so, and, and now what's part two going to be like? I don't even know. Well, you know, what's cool about that game is, you know, yeah, more is coming, like the part two, but you you feel like every, you know, they, the joke about Final Fantasy is that every one of the games is uh, is not the final, because here's a new one, and but they're all so disconnected, and they almost all are their own franchise. Like, you could just keep making Final Fantasy VII games, and in that world... And then you can go to your other Final Fantasy games. You could just make a you could make a Final Fantasy VIII remake, and you could make a Final Fantasy three, re and just like redo and and keep iterating because each one of these universes is its own solitary thing, its own which thing. is yeah, which is crazy to think of. And and uh, boy, Square would be milking it, but. Uh, um, I was so impressed with uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I loved uh, diving back into uh, Persona 5 Royal as well. That was um, just a staggering accomplishment. Uh, what else did I have? Oh, Fall Guys. Have you been playing Fall Guys? Are you a fan? Oh, yes. Yes, I enjoyed yeah. Fall Guys. Uh, I question the longevity of it, but uh, the fact that it... I mean, kudos to Mediatonic and just... Two million copies sold, and then that's not even counting uh, all the copies that are downloaded on PlayStation Plus. It's just wow! Um, it's amazing. Uh, my big thing there is I I like it, uh, but I kind of like uh, once again Nintendo. I turned to Nintendo. And I was like, Nintendo, what if you did this? Yeah. But with Mario Odyssey's movement, like Mario Odyssey's yeah. movement is so precise. Yes. And there's like once you get high level, you can start to do some really interesting things. <laughs> and that's do you think what Nintendo I'd... gets pissed off when they play a game like Fall Guys, or do they go, <laughs> oh, okay, we can. Mm, this is interesting. You know, do, do do they get inspired or do they go, damn, why didn't we do that? Like if it was if it was any other company, like I'd feel like they'd be like, let's put this into development yesterday. Yeah. But Nintendo, I get the feeling like they're like. Oh, we could probably do this with Mario, but let's not. Let's do something completely yeah. out there, like weird with Mario, if we're going to do something that's multiplayer like this. So it's one of those things I was like, I wish Nintendo was just a little bit more traditional, but 
then they wouldn't be Nintendo, so. That's right, that's why we love them. All right, so Ghost of Tsushima is your favorite of 2020 so far. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two is my favorite, probably followed up by Animal Crossing, New Horizons, and I can't wait to get to the end of the year, and I'll, I'll be uh, talking to you many times before the end of the year, but uh, one of the things that we always do at EP is we do the Rocket and Reagan Awards, and I, I like to get comments from different people all over the place, so I'd love to have you in the Rocket and Reagan Awards giving us your picks for each of the categories. But we'll talk about sure. that post cyberpunk and all the stuff that's <laughs> heading our way. Uh, but I did want to give a shout out. We, I, I posted on Twitter and I was really shocked by the um, uh, the comments. I got so many comments. I said favorite games of uh, 2020 and I got some great ones. I've got 10 that I'm going to hit right now. Uh, our buddy uh, Blarcade said uh, Marvel's Iron Man VR and Resident Evil 3. And I know there were a lot of detractors for both of those games, but uh, Blair, I had a blast uh, with both of those titles for yep. sure. And RE3, even though it wasn't maybe as big as RE2, had the online component, which was fun, even you know if it's not the the most popular online experience, it was still pretty damn impressive uh, and gorgeous and crazy and insane. And Iron Man VR absolutely put you in the suit, which, uh, you know, uh, achievement unlocked with that. Uh, Channel 3 Live said, uh, The Last of Us Part 2, uh, emotionally powerful, uh, so emotionally powerful, it's, it can't be topped. And, uh, and But 2020 was a banger, so many fantastic titles, Channel 3 Live says. Josh Sway, uh, who directed the, uh, the coin, uh, insert coin documentary about Midway. I don't know if you've seen that, Mike. It's amazing. I have not. Oh. It's so good. It's about the uh, the history of Midway, but it really focuses on the 90s creation of uh, oh. Mortal Kombat and NBA Jam. It's it's an amazing doc. You got to check it out. But his pick is uh, Avoiding People Simulator 2020, <laughs> which he's right on the money with that. Um, <laughs> Heather B. Ottawa says Animal Crossing dash 22 million copies to exclamation marks. <laughs> uh, we got Greetings Mortal, who said, if Persona 5 Royal counts, then that otherwise Final Fantasy VII Remake. We got a JRPG fan one. out there. Uh, Ghost Man Mus says uh, Ghost of Tsushima. I don't know if they have named their... I was, uh, I was about to say, if they had if they had picked something else, that would have been disappointing. Yeah. I, I don't know if it came post-ghosted. Like, is, is it just ghost love? Was it the game that made that happen? Who knows? Uh, Complacent Robot. I got a lot of picks for this one. Streets of Rage 4, which also was a knockout game. No pun intended. Incredible experience. Did you play that? Yes. So Very fun, much right? so. Very much so. Yeah. VR Grid, who is our pal who always chimes in with great VR suggestions. I haven't played this yet, but uh, now that he says it's cool, I definitely want to. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Did you check that out? I did not. Uh, I should, though. Uh, yeah. Most of my VR time this year has been Pistol Whip. Which yeah, I is... love Pistol Whip. Yeah. Classic. That was our Rocket and Reagan Award winner last year. But VR Grid knows what he's talking about. Uh, if he's if he is he plays all the VR stuff. So if he's touting Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, I have to check that out. Uh, Full Metal Ninja says uh, people are sleeping on Half Life. Alex talking about uh, stellar <laughs> VR experiences, and then uh, Anthony Carboni, the host of the Star Wars show, said um, checking my list. It's Fast and Furious Crossroads oh, ten no. times. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> uh, is I think Anthony was drunk when he uh, when he wrote that tweet. Oh, <laughs> I haven't it, played that. I I downloaded it to my PC, but I haven't checked it out yet. Have you played it? I have not, but it it was it was like pulling teeth to get like even a copy. Like we got a code for it. I think the day oh, that's after, never after it sign. had come out. <laughs> yeah. And so we were like, oh, this is probably not good then. Um, <laughs> And the videos that I've seen uh, aren't pointing to a particular, which is very weird to me, because yeah. Slightly Mad Studios, Project Cars They're 3, good. I've yeah. played, uh, and it's good. Yeah. Um, I didn't get to play it a ton enough to write about it for the preview, but I, what I played, I was like, oh, I mean, Slightly Mad, they do a good job. So I was kind of like, is this was this their like aliens, Colonial Marines, like a thing that they had to do? <laughs> over here in the rest of the studio while they were working on the game they cared about like i don't i just i just don't know what happened here um 
and we're looking at the trailers and we were just like in works like just like what happened like did they <laughs> did they like call michelle rodriguez and vin diesel up and like hey could you just say this line and like not even like no no voice directing or anything i just i don't know it's it's okay. such a weird and now that it's coming out like way ahead of the next film is yeah. just it is all weird that the the success of that film baffles or that series baffles me but uh, i also <gasps> love that people i'm not a huge I, I i've seen them all but right. I, you know i don't know they're, they're I, 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 what can i say i'm not a huge <laughs> fan but uh i love that people love it i love that people get so excited and they're so invested and and uh um, you know, there's some really fantastic actors and talent in, in that franchise, and they they certainly aren't boring. <laughs> like, they no, can throw I, everything on the screen. I, I do love most of them. I, I love most of them. I think four and eight were probably my, like, just, <sighs> like, just four is just boring. No, no, so four I is feel like, for four. you. I feel for you that you don't you haven't even played this game and you're just like eh like this should be it should, should be, be like like something that you're freaking out for yeah and, and yeah. so I, I just looked at it and I'm just like no I don't I can't do that to to to, <laughs> Your beloved to the fa- franchise right to the, fa- <laughs> to the family <laughs> <laughs> like no I'm not gonna do oh, that that's crazy family. you know I met Paul Walker once I I um uh, I we were at Sundance and I had a uh, a great convo with him and he was so humble and so nice. He really impressed me. He was a really cool dude and he uh, um, he was very generous with his time. He was off camera. I just uh, I, I bumped into him somehow. I don't even know where the hell we were, but we were we chatted and uh, I thought he was great. He was a super cool guy and it was such a tragedy. Um, and uh, oh, it's awful, but uh, you know he certainly. Uh, uh, was a part of something massive that endures, and I, I, you know, I love that people love the franchise. I think it's great, and maybe this next one is gonna, you know, I, I, turn I me hope. into one of those lovers. Who I, knows? I hope. Yeah. Like, like the Paul Walker send off in the films is probably one of the few times I've cried in a theater. Oh wow! Like my girlfriend was next to me, just like, like, are you okay? Like, are you like, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So shout out to Anthony Carboni who got us talking about Fast and Furious, man. And now I definitely am going to play this game and I'm going to stream it next week. Uh, but uh, I, I think we're going to end the uh, the podcast there, my friend. It's always a great thrill to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us, Mike Williams. It's always fun to be here. Have me back whenever. I'm always open. I know you're always playing and we definitely will be reaching out to bring you back. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you for, uh, you know, uh, talking to us about your favorite games of 2020. Let us know in the comments below if there's titles we've missed. We know we have. There's a lot to keep up with. Uh, but we'll be back soon with uh, a new Vix Basement and lots of fresh content for you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll see you soon. And until then, play forever. <laughs>